Well, there's a new normal when it comes to children's health, in large part due to the disruption of COVID-19. Dr. Chad Rogers, an Arkansas pediatrician and the chief medical officer at the Arkansas Foundation for Medical Care, has some advice on adjusting to the way things are and may be for some time. COVID-19 has obviously changed some things dramatically about child health. What has kind of been the biggest thing from your perspective? Uh, is it that people didn't come in and do some of the routine things or has it been larger and bigger in scope than that? Right, you know, COVID-19 had a huge impact on practices. I think for pediatrics and for adult practices and for subspecialists, uh, people just took a lot of the routine things that they did and just kind of put them on pause. They didn't make their regular checkups. They didn't think about shots. I think um, we just didn't know a lot about the virus so uh, at the beginning as far as how it was spread. Now we know more that it's spread by respiratory droplets and not may, may be necessarily surfaces. We were very focused on wiping down the clinic surfaces every day and washing our hands like we always do. Uh, but people were really just afraid to come in. And so back at the beginning, say March, April, May, we saw a very big dramatic drop in childhood immunizations. The health department obviously tracks that very closely. And so a lot of people, because they weren't coming in to their shots, um, were not getting the things that they need, like their measles shot. And, and so uh, if you get to a certain percent of the population who aren't immunized, then you start to see those things pop up. Um, so we did really begin to be concerned, are we gonna train one pandemic for another? And that we really needed to make sure we did a big focus on immunizations. And just kind of seeing it tick back up, I've talked with a lot of my colleagues. Uh, people are really focused on well child visits. And so um, trying to get uh, people in and also trying to get people up to their shots. That was the one thing about school too, letting up the school nurses have always been really good at making sure that kids are up to date on their shots until they can't come back to school the next day until uh, they've gone to see their pediatrician. So I would say, you know, our volume fell to 10 to 20% for a couple of months and now we're probably back more up to 80, 90% of people coming back in and still seeing some sick visits. You can't give a vaccine shot through telemedicine, can you? You cannot, <laughs> you cannot give a virtual shot. <laughs> Uh, my kids are probably happy about that, but uh, they are going and uh, taking care of themselves. Let's talk about um, staying active. Mm -hmm. um, we, I think another compounding situation of COVID-19 is we were a bit homebound, even mm -hmm. though there were opportunities to get out in nature uh, and nutrition, the right. other thing. So give me a little bit on both of those topics. Well, I think it's kind of a really big impact. You know, um, we have been doing a lot of back to school physicals right beforehand. And I could say I could consistently saw a lot of kids gain between uh, I would say the COVID-19 pounds between 19 and 20 pounds. Uh, but I mean, I personally have as well. I mean, we've just been trying to do what we've been asked to stay at home. Your usual places to go work out at gyms and um, at athletic clubs and just, you know, going there. Youth sports were also right, youth curtailed. Sports were right. off. Yeah, and so that's the way kids usually stay active. Um, people really restricted play dates and stuff like that. So kids were not getting out and about. So, and what we did do is we stayed at home on the couch on our device or watching TV and then we all found ourselves going to the kitchen every five minutes. Um, it's kind of interesting. I just read an interesting article um, while I was, I was off last week about, um, you know, when people, of course, are stressed, you get into that panic mode, just like in the old times when you thought famine or feast was happening. So it's sort of a natural instinct to eat <laughs> uh, because it calms you, but also your body is kind of preparing and storing calories. So um, I know we all got into some high calorie foods and staying home and not being quite as active as we should. But October, Child Health Month, uh, October is usually one of the prettiest um, uh, months in our state. I think October, November is some of the driest. Um, I think it's a good time for people, now that the heat's gone, to get out and get moving again, get outside. So Arkansas already had a childhood obesity problem to begin with. I think we ranked, uh, where we ranked We're nationally. fifth worst in the country. So one in five children, 20% of our kids are overweight. And we have some of the highest rates among adults as well. Is that getting better or getting worse? I think we have seen a general trend of that getting worse. Um, you know, we're definitely one of the heaviest uh, and unhealthiest states in the union. Um, and there's probably lots of reasons for that. Some of it's access to care, some of it's poverty, you know, some of it's living in rural areas and not being able to get to the doctor or have places to even stay fit or healthy. We have a lot of food deserts, uh, a lot of food insecurity. So all those things sort of add up to poor health. But And just because someone's overweight doesn't mean that they have good nutrition. It may actually mean that they have worse nutrition. So people often confuse that and think, you know, these people are hungry, but they're, they're starving of nutrients that, that they need because they're not getting what they need. We, uh, you referenced it earlier, a lot of people spent a lot of time on their smart screens, mm -hmm. uh, whether they were uh, computer devices or smartphones or whatever uh, during the pandemic. So is that easing up some? I mean, <laughs> with, with everybody kind of getting back into school, maybe an in-person basis, but 
yet there's still a pretty big virtual community out there too. Right. In some ways, it's getting worse. Actually, I, I hate I, my iPhone on Monday morning. I opened up and it gives me my average screen time for the week. So I was a little ashamed of how much I'd been on my phone last week. But I was on vacation, so. <laughs> but you know, no, there's there's good virtual time and there's bad virtual time or screen time. Uh, American Academy of Pediatrics really encourages people to limit to an hour to two hours a day. But now so many kids are using you know their iPads to go to school. They're using their iPads as textbooks. Uh, they're using their iPads to learn educational videos and go to things. So those are all good things. And, and parents still really need to be you know, closely monitoring that because obviously we all know there's some things we don't want our kids to see on the internet. But try to limit that game time um, a little bit. Again, that's a way a lot of kids have been able to socialize is mm -hmm. playing some of these games. Uh, but those games tend to be particularly violent sometimes. So you know, really trying to limit that. Um, again, I think if you can get out in the yard safely with the neighbors across the street and still be able to distance, you know, that's going to be better for your kid's mental health and for their physical health and, and then spending all that time on the screen time. So we still need to be conscious of it. I think we all need to work on it a little bit, um, just put down our phones. And actually the other thing for is just to get out a book and just read a good old book and not stare at a screen. Uh, a lot of people are reporting sleeping issues related to the use of the light you know, for their iPad. Um, it kind of suppresses melatonin production and like the number of prescriptions for sleeping aids has gone up by 15 20 percent so it really has had a huge impact on our, our overall health interesting uh lastly you are also a board member of arkansas advocates for children and families i know you guys had a big uh, retreat about a week ago maybe two weeks ago and you have a big um, annual event coming up for your friends of children or friends of children luncheon um, at your retreat, though, you guys identified some legislative priorities, and one of the biggest things that I think I have heard is it centers on equity and mm -hmm. how all of that has been compounded by the COVID-19 pandemic. Speak to me a little bit about that topic and what you see maybe going forward up at the state capitol. Yeah, you know, definitely over the last couple months, we've all seen the impact of race and um, the impact of racial inequality and, and then racial equity, which are which are the very different things. So. Um, and we really have seen that play out in this pandemic as we've seen Hispanics and, and um, black um, um, Arkansans really be disproportionately affected. They're more likely to get sicker, they're more likely to get hospitalized, and they're more likely to die. So racial equity is a health care issue. Uh, it affects a lot of our uh, society. Um, there's a lot of things that uh, go into that, but just so also the sort of generational trauma of, of stress and poverty, food insecurity, housing, all those things impact um, kids and adults' health. And it really it has begun as an organization, advocates as an organization has weaved that into every uh, area that we're looking at, especially when it comes to the legislative agenda and how there probably should be a little racial equity check on every piece of legislation that comes through to see how it affects uh, minorities. Sounds like I will see you up at the Capitol some. We'll be up there quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be masked up. So. Yeah, with All the right. next step. Dr. Chad Rogers, as always, thank you so much. Thank you, Ruth.